In this video, we're going to take you through creating a payment method, processing a transaction, and understanding what all the fields mean. So the first thing you can do is create a new payment method. This is on the contact with the related list for payment methods added to the page layout. We're using a test stripe card number because this is a test uh, payment gateway that we've added. And you see how we have the asterisks and number here. Those are literally just uh, text characters. Those aren't actually encrypted fields, so it's PCI compliant. Once we refresh the screen, we'll see we now have our Stripe card ID and our customer ID, so we're ready to make a transaction on this card. Go ahead and click New Transaction on our Stripe record type. We're going to do this transaction for 20 bucks. Now before I do, we have some options. We can use this checkbox to auto capture the transaction. Just by installing Payment 360, we have automatically scheduled transaction batch process that runs in the background uh, starting from 1 a.m. So if this box is checked and there is a due date, let's say for tomorrow, this transaction will run at 1 a.m. in your org's uh, local time uh, and it will process at that time. Um, the description is optional. Uh, the transaction type over here, this says uh, normal or refund. They all just start by normal. Um, if this is a refund, uh, we'll get into that shortly. Uh, retained revenue amount also deals with refunds, and I'll explain that shortly. Uh, our receipt email, once you process the transaction, if you want to send a receipt to a customer, this will send a receipt directly from Stripe. If you want to send a receipt from Workflow or Process Builder or an Apex rule you have, you can do that locally with Salesforce. And you can do that based upon transaction statuses, which I'll talk about shortly. The two fixed field, this allows you to analyze your transaction records to determine if a transaction is going to be successful or not. This has multiple filter criteria assessing your auto capture criteria, your payment method to see if it's valid, and a few other pieces. So it just helps admins and users to be able to understand if their transaction will uh, process correctly. So these fields below here, transaction status and payment status, these are, um, think of them as like a flow of how you can understand your transaction business process. So on our doc site, uh, this is accessible from payment360.io when you click on support. If you click on transactions and scroll to the bottom, you'll see we have our flow of our statuses. So when you go ahead and click the capture button or when it runs in the background, it goes from open to process, which is a system value that automatically happens and a user never has to set that value, to completed or failed. Once it's completed, it will generally go to a captured state. Completed and captured means that you'll get the money. Um, there are other statuses where you can authorize a transaction and then later capture the transaction. Authorization is kind of like if you rent a car and you put a $100 hold on and you may charge that card uh, within seven days for the authorized amount or less than the authorized amount. Less than the authorized amount would result in the partially captured state. Uh, uncaptured mean that you never actually captured the authorized amount. You just let it basically time out after seven days and to put the money back on the customer's card. Partially refunded and refunded, I'll get to those shortly, but you can use these statuses to better understand how to process transactions. If you want to automatically process transactions by a process that you develop yourself, you can use Workflow, Process Builder, or Apex to automatically set a transaction into the process state, and that will then automatically send that transaction to Stripe. So back here on the transaction side, the payment method related, this could be a card or an ACH account. Um, this little checkbox is a formula field that works on a few different criteria to tell you if your payment method is going to be bad. The payment method is optional. Um, you don't have to insert this because the payment gateway is actually um, related directly to the method. The payment gateway, what you can do though, is that after the transaction is processed, this gateway will automatically update um, once it's all set. Um, but this gateway serves other um, features uh, that we won't get into on this call. Um, these two relationships here, so the transaction object actually looks up to itself. It references itself a few times for different reasons. If we have refunds, what we do is the refund transaction looks up to the parent, which is the original transaction, or you can have multiple refunds if it's a partial refund. 
this shows if it's a reattempt. Now, this reattempt field and this reattempt field here, when you have a transaction that's set to auto capture, it will try to run that transaction. If it fails for whatever reason, and transactions do fail from time to time, maybe there's a hold on someone's account, or if it was a bigger transaction from an unrecognized source and someone calls the credit card provider and then they, they uh, allow you to process that transaction, it will generally succeed the next time. Uh, but it may fail because it was declined for some reason. What these reattempts do is it attracts the number of times you actually reattempt that transaction. So you can have escalating business rules based upon these reattempts. So the first time it reattempts, maybe you do nothing. The second time it reattempts, maybe you um, create a task using a workflow rule to contact the customer. Or uh, using our forthcoming payment portal, maybe you want to automatically send the customer a link to update their uh, their card uh, or their ACH account that you have on file. And with progressive reattempt numbers, maybe you have, you know, on the fifth or sixth reattempt, you can automatically notify a customer using a workflow or process builder email alert that, hey, your service is going to get shut off for whatever reason for non-payment or something like that. Um, these other fields on the left are for business rules. So late by days, this determines if your transaction, uh, the due date is in the past. So if I go ahead and set this to the 12th, we can go ahead and look at our late by days field. You can see that we're now three days late in being able to pay this transaction. Um, paid by days, when I go ahead and pay this, it will calculate the date it was processed less the due date, and it will give you an average of the number of days to pay for a given customer. All these fields here at the bottom, these get automatically populated by Stripe. If for some reason the transaction fails, uh, all of the messages here are from Stripe's um, API response that we populate here. The error message is customer friendly, um, such as a failed transaction, it'll let you know what happened. Um, card ID, customer ID, transaction ID, original transaction ID, these automatically come from Stripe. You never have to um, update these fields. These are just for reference. If you do log into the Stripe backend, you can actually search for the values of these uh, fields after they're populated to be able to find the correlating um, transaction customer or card within the Stripe dashboard. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and process this transaction so you can see what happens. happens. I'm going to go ahead and click on Capture. And this makes an after insert call. So you'll see this as process. All you have to do is refresh your screen to see uh, if the transaction has processed. We do ask that you allow up to 120 seconds for processing. This is something due to both Stripe and Salesforce limitations. So if you don't see it update from the process state immediately, just give it up to 120 seconds to do a refresh. So some things you'll notice that happened here, we have our card customer and transaction IDs that were automatically updated. You'll also see our paid by date is a formula field based upon this process date and time and the due date. It just does a little simple calculation that you can use to, uh, to figure that out. So what I'm going to do here is process a partial refund so you can understand what that looks like. So once I go to do a partial refund, maybe I'll do for $9.25. I'll go ahead and click on refund. And what this has now does, it creates a refund transaction in the background that actually references the original parent transaction. So you'll notice that this field is blank, but on this record, this, this record's field would be populated to reference the record that we're looking at. So each record then references itself and, and does a roll up that we have built into the package. And you'll notice that we have this retained revenue amount field here. This says if you have uh, the original transaction was 20 bucks, you then uh, had 925 that was partially refunded. You now get to uh, keep 1075 as your refund. And you'll notice that we also have our partially refunded uh, payment status here as well. So I hope this has been useful for what all of this stuff means here that you're looking at on the screen. If you have any more questions, um, check out payment360.io and click on our support link to view our docs or feel free to uh, shoot us an email. Our email address is on the site there. Thanks.